So I'm just going through here some of the uh, examples from your PowerPoint. Um, so this is the first one. Now this sort of question, um, as far as I can tell, I don't think you, you appear quite like this in your exam. So this is just a way to ease you in it. But I'm going to go through it anyway for that reason. It's a way to introduce it. And also, just on the off chance, it's a little bit ambiguous. But I've not seen any questions like this. But it's actually a little easier than the ones that I you know, have seen. So what the heck? We'll just look at it. So Peter, he's investigating uh, rainfall. Would it be uh, whether the average rainfall last year was higher than it was in the past? So he knows the average um, monthly rainfall over the last 50 years. So we, we should already be thinking that's the null hypothesis. So remember the one that, you know, the one they expected to be da, 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 is going to be the null hypothesis. Um, he collected the rainfall data for last year in eight different places. As we can see in his lovely table, he's then going to conduct this t-test at a 10% significance level. So first thing, state the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null one would have been the average from before. So the mean would be 61. And what is he looking at? He's saying if it's uh, higher than it was in the past, so the alternative, uh, the alternative hypothesis is going to be this, when the mean is greater than uh, 61. So he's only looking at one tail, he's looking at one end, so it's a one-tail test. <clears throat> now, the GDC part. So what you would do then is you would pop this in to find uh, your T statistic and your p-value. So I've done that already for you. Uh, I've beautifully labeled it rain. So there's the data here, uh, very much as before. So statistics, we're going to go into stat tests, number four, and we're going to conduct a t-test. Now, this t-test, so you're going to, you get a choice between uh, data and statistics. So we will do a few examples on this. This one, you're, you're, we're using the original data. Um, so we choose data. And we click OK. So this is the uh, original mean, so it's 61. So there we go for the null hypothesis. The list, I choose uh, rain. We won't leave this. And now note here, you actually have to select the alternative or the alternate hypothesis. So it was where it was greater than. So we pick that one. So where diddly dumb is greater than the null hypothesis. And this means it's just going to plop our uh, column in our results into column C. And as before, you can get a nice visual representation of that if you want, if you click that little box. So hopefully this will correspond to the answers that we've got. So there is the T value, uh, 0 0.266, hazard, and P value is 0 0.399, let's see. Well, isn't that wondrous? So that's all you do to get those values. Uh, there's a little bit more to this question. We need to interpret it. So state the conclusion of the test <clears throat> and interpret it uh, in uh, context. Now, in this case, we go back to the p-value that we found on the GDC there. Um, it's significantly, uh, significantly bigger than the significance level. So there's not enough evidence to reject the uh, null uh, Hypothesis. So what assumption about distribution do we make? Because when we're using t-test, then the underlying population of rainfall is normally distributed. So this is quite a standard sort of question. That is the assumption, uh, the key assumption that we make uh, when we're using t-tests. Okay, in the second example then, we are now uh, going to be entering statistics rather than uh, data, the raw data. So here we have got a uh, the mean times of 400 meter times, so which have been normally distributed. So that's T score tick. Um, and we've got their sort of average over time there, 67.3 seconds. They get a new coach. They just take a sample of some of the members. And the mean goes down for that sample. It gives us the variance of that sample. 7.84 and what it wants us to find out is there sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level uh, that the mean 400 meter time has uh, changed. 
So in this case, then, the null hypothesis, the old one, you know, in the past it was 67.3 seconds, and that's why that would be the null hypothesis. Uh, and it's asking us if it's changed. So if it's changed, we're not this time just looking at one side. It could have got smaller or it could have got bigger. Therefore, it's a two-tailed test. Uh, so you'd write it like that. So it's not 67.3. So this is what we are investigating. What are we actually going to put into the calculator? Well, we've been given, we've been given these items. So it is 63.8 seconds for the mean of that sample, and the variance was 7.84. Now, in your calculators, we'll see in a moment, you have to type in the standard deviation. So you have to remember that to go from variance to a very similar, uh, very, very similar thing, to go to variance to standard deviation, you have to square root. So that's like a little trick. So do remember to square root your variance to get the standard deviation. So let's try and do this in our calculators. <laughs> okay, so this time it's a little bit different from the first time. So statistics, stat tests, and t-test still, but we haven't got the, the original data. We've just been given the statistics. So the uh, null hypothesis was 67.3. Uh, the mean of the sample is 63.8 that we're analyzing. Uh, the standard deviation, remember we got from the variance, is 2.8. Um, if that is possible to get for three significant figures, I'd do that, not two, though. Um, and then number, so n is a so number of value, number of uh, values in the, or number of items in the sample. There were 20, there are 20 randomly selected members. And n is how many. Uh, we don't need to change that because that's exactly what we're looking at this time. It's a two-tailed test. And I'm not going to click that because I just tried doing that and it gets a bit too cluttered for my liking. Uh, a bit clearer if you do this. So there we go then. So T value should be minus 5.59. Let's check. And it is. And then the P value is this. So very, very astonishingly small uh, P value. Right. Now because that P value is so astonishingly small, um, it's obviously much smaller than 0 0.05, which was the significance level there as a decimal here. So if it's smaller and significantly smaller, uh, that is sufficient evidence to uh, reject the uh, null hypothesis. So that means it has changed. So we can fairly conclusively actually say that, yeah, uh, that there is sufficient evidence that the mean 400 meter time has changed.